Namaste, what's good everybody? Welcome, I'm Amri here in Los Angeles. Pleasure to be back with you. Listen, let's get the mood right. Let's get the atmosphere right. Let's prepare ourselves for this tea ceremony. You're in for a treat. Relax and unwind. Prepare yourself. Here we go. So I have the sage. It's burning. I'm going to have everything flowing right. Cleanse this space a little bit for you, right? Have it blazing right there. Get our atmosphere right. So I just want to say this name, Morosco. Morosco. By the time this tea ceremony is over with today, you will not forget the name Antonio Morosco. I guess I should update it because I don't think I have the right one in there now. Let me update it. Let me see if I did this right. Do I have it right? Let me see. Roscoe. All right. So we're going to be talking about Italian futurist painter Antonio Morosco in our session here today in our tea ceremony in just a moment. Um, let me get the hot water. Let me get the teapot going. Let me get the vibes going. Well, we got the sage burning. So let me go grab that and then we'll get, take a deeper dive into our discussion today of Morosco. Okay. So one second, let me go grab it real quick. Right. All right, so I got the uh, equipment that we need all cleaned up too. Got the teapot there, got the pitcher there, got the teacup there, drop pot, strainer, holder, check, check, check. I think we're dialed in. I think we're ready. For this tea sesh. Okay. Okay. 
All right, so once again, this is some Tian Guayin loose leaf oolong from uh, Taiwan, high mountains. I'm gonna pour it out onto the tray. Right, check this out. Here are the tea leaves, nice and fresh, full of flavor. So I'm gonna set these out before any tea session, tea ceremony. So important to do the ceremonial wipe. It's also part of this cleansing practice. It also helps you just get your energy right, your vibes right, you know? Don't have to rush through it. Just taking our time. There we go, get this picture right. Right. So the first thing you do with your tea ceremony is you have to warm your vessels after you cleanse them. So I'm going to pour some hot water in to both the teapot and to the cup. Warm them up a little bit. You do that, give it a gentle shake. So if you have your, uh, you have your tea instruments with you, you can do the same as well. Get you some hot water, get it boiling, and then you warm it up wherever you are. All right. Once it's all nice and warm, you can dump the water. And then you can pour in the leaves. So we're getting our leaves ready because we're going to talk about Antonio Morasco. Perfect, you caught that. Okay. So we put some water in. And with any, uh, anytime you rinsing off the leaves, you're not gonna drink it. So you only put a little bit of water in here just to rinse the leaves, right? You're getting all the dust off, getting all the dirt off. Gonna let them open up just a little bit. So this first one, just a rinse, not drinking it. Now the second pour is what it's all about, right? Sometimes we don't always get everything on the first try. You know, it's like a metaphor. Sometimes you got to try it again. The second pour is the first one that we drink. And so we're gonna fill our pot all the way up, allow our leaves to open and expand for this tea ceremony. All right, nice. So I think we got the vibes going. We have the sage burning. Now we're gonna burn a little bit of the Palo Santo wood. Really get this space cleansed, really get it going. Get that. All right. Whew, the energy is flowing up in here. Nice. Okay. So, while the leaves are starting to brew, let's get into it. Morasco. Antonio Morasco. So as you know, I'm always strolling through these social media streets, these websites, the Google streets. And I came across Bonhams because I'm always into art, right? I always like to find some new artists that I can really enjoy. And I came across this work that I thought was interesting, right? I was like, I've never heard of the artist, never heard of Antonio Morasco, didn't know he existed. But while searching through Bonhams, I came across this image of 
Antonio Morosco's, and it's called Pesajel Con Treno, right? Pesajel Con Treno. So let's just, let me see what that means. I have the translator open. Let me see, detect language. Landscape with Train, right? So that's what this one is called, Landscape with Train by Antonio Morosco. And so this work, it says, Landscape with Train, Antonio Morosco, born 1869, died 1975, signed and dated Morosco, 33. In the lower right, looks like it's happening right there. Let's see. Image, image loading. All right. Yeah. Can see it right there, Morosco. You probably can't see it because my head's blocking it, but it does say. But so take in this image right here, right? Just take a moment to savor it for a second. Like, do you vibe with this? Does it is it working for you? Does it appeal to you? Do the colors? Take a moment to see what you notice. What do you see? What dominates this painting? Where is your eye drawn to? Right? So right off the bat, I see in the midst of all these pastel colors, there is a black train right in the center, dominating. I mean, absolutely dominating this image. It's like it's coming out of nowhere, right? Then there's this shadowy kind of figure on the back of the train, right? This is what I'm seeing right off the bat. And down near this tunnel, um, there's another figure with a head kind of down. And so it's so then interesting. And even on the other side, on the, on the uh, left side of the picture, there's some figures in the arches, right, as well. And I just think that that's interesting, right? I just think that there's something to notice that here it is, usually we see figures, like people, having dominance, right, where they're the focal point. And here, it's a train, right? The train is a focal point emerging out of nothingness. And all these figures are shadowily surrounding it, right? You can kind of see the remnants of what looks like a train track. You can see smoke billowing out that almost looks like balloons or cotton candy. You, you can see these buildings done in these geometric ways. It, it isn't based in reality, right? It doesn't look like it's uh, a picture, right? It doesn't look realistic, except for the most realistic thing is the train, right? The train looks more realistic than the people. The people, than the buildings. The, be, the buildings are all these weird geometrical shapes, right? And so there's something interesting. So we want to continue with this painting by Antonio Morosco. But we're also going to pour our tea out, right? Because this is a tea ceremony too, right? So, got the tea going. This is the second pour. Take a look at this. Nice color. Nice clarity. Mm. This is going to be a nice cup of tea. I can already tell. I can feel it. Strain her out. Check it out. Color, clarity, clout. This is impressive. You can see the smoke billowing out. Smelling it. Exceptional. This is going to be a nice pour. So, I got my teacup right here. Let's pour this out. I'm going to let you see. Nice. Solid. So this is the first pour. We're gonna let it cool just a little bit so I don't burn my tongue. But as we were saying about the painting, so we said that there's a train, right? And the picture is literally called train with landscape, right? And that's really what it is, a train and a landscape, some shadowy figures, some lights all around. You got these street lights that almost look like spotlights and these um, spotlights on the train um, that are just, really out there shining all this light and there's smoke and the smoke it doesn't look 
harmful, right? It doesn't look it doesn't look like it's something dangerous. The smoke almost looks playful, right? There is this quality, one, where the shadowy figures are the scary thing, but the technology, the train, the movement, it has this animation to it. It has this playfulness to it. It has this vibrancy to it. It has this energy to it. And isn't that interesting, this kind of juxtaposition of a train being playful and vibrant and filled with energy and filled with life and has these billowing balloon-like cotton candy smoke clouds. But yet these figures are shadowy, their backs are turned to us, we can't see their face, they have hats on their head, they're hunched over, they're in the corners, they're in the cuts. And there are all these lights dominating, showing all these lights. And so, you know, when I originally saw this, I was thinking, oh yeah, you know what? This kind of feels like the 40s. That's what I originally thought. And then I thought, you know, this could also be at home in the 90s, right? <laughs> like this could feel like the 90s, but because of the trains, I thought 40s. And so when I learned more about the painting, when I learned more about the artwork, I found out that this was painted in actually the 1950s, right? So I wasn't that far off, I wasn't that far off from my initial guesstimate. So the, I think the tea has cooled off just enough. So if you got your tea at home, you want to assume the proper grip, right? So if you have the a teacup like this, rimless, I mean, handleless, index finger, lid, thumb, base, boom. Wrap the other fingers around. This is the proper, proper way to hold the teacup like a G. I'm like, right, I mean, this is the way, right? Okay, so let's take a sip, see how it's going. Mm. This is good, this is good tea. Nice, smooth, very smooth. All right, let's get the second pour going. Oh, I forgot I was supposed to dedicate that one to something. We'll dedicate this one. So I always usually dedicate the first pour of the session to your dreams, like wherever you're trying to work for in life, because it's so important that you take a moment to focus in on where you're going or where you're headed. And so we'll dedicate this second pour to your dreams. Wherever you are, whatever you're working towards, whatever you're striving on, this one's to you. Put in the hard work, put in the dedication, and you could achieve it in your life. Namaste. And then you gotta do your little soul dance, right? Just vibe. <laughs> ah, all right. So, third pour. Okay. So, as I was saying, so this is Morosco. Have the train dominating the center. We have the shadowy figures. We have the cotton candy-like smoke. Now, you would have to think that if this was the, like if this painting was created today, if the, given the context of like global warming and just the awareness that we have about the impact of, of carbon on our environment, I don't think that the can, that the, smoke would be shaped as, you know, cotton candy or balloons or something playful. It would probably be a lot more sinister, right? It would probably be painted in a way where the, mo the most bright and interesting colors are not necessarily the smoke, right? It wouldn't necessarily look that playful. That's just my initial reaction. That's just my initial take, that it doesn't necessarily comport with our current reality. Or the current sentiments surrounding our current reality and just our relationship with uh, technology, right? It, it, it doesn't necessarily seem like that smoke would be so playful, in my opinion. And so, when I was looking at the painting, I was thinking, man, this is some kind of a cool looking kind of painting. It's interesting, right? It had an interesting look. 
And it had some unique features with the smoke and the train as being the dominant force, the shadowy figures that I was like, hmm, I want to learn a little bit more about this painting. And I want to learn a little bit more about the artist, Antonio Morosco. Like, where, where did he come from? I've never heard of him before. Oh, the, well, the style of painting, what is this term? What is this called? You know, there's so many questions about it that I just didn't know. And so I went to look up more information about the painting, right? And when I was looking up information about the painting, there wasn't very much. As you can see here, look at this, footnotes. The, the authenticity of this work has been kindly confirmed by Professor Tonino Sicoli, right? And it says provenance, Galleria Annun, wait, how do you say this? Annun Sicara in Milan, private collection, Italy. Right, there wasn't a great bit of detail about the painting, right? And I was curious about what is this painting? So I began to Google or search for Antonio Morosco, the artist. And so when I came across his work, I saw more work, but I didn't see a lot of biographical descriptions about who he was, right? And I didn't see a lot of information about the artist. And I thought that was interesting that here it was, this someone who had a great deal of work, right? It seems like he was, uh, uh, he had a long career, but there wasn't a lot of information about him. And so that always intrigues me, right? Like, why, why isn't there a lot of information about this artist, right? He, he was, he, he had a, a numerous number of work. He was a part of this Italian movement, right? And I saw some other works that I thought were pretty appealing to me that, that, that were sold in auction, right? Before, right? So look at this one, like, like this one, this figure, this is, right? This is, right? It's interesting, right? These geometric shapes, um, this muted color palette, like there's some interest there. Focus on that figure there. And there was another one there, a woman in the mirror. I thought this one was, you know, I thought this one was like intriguing too. And all of his works, they did kind of feel like they could be Italian to me, right? Because of these, the color choices and just the look. I was like, this could be a 1990s Versace print, right? This right here, this looks like it could be a print, right? If you take away some of this detail, this could be 1990s Versace print, right? This could be on the back of someone. Someone could be wearing this, right? This could be a pattern, right? Just these kind of interesting geometric forms and the interplay of colors, right? This, 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 this could be that. And so I began to, you know, explore a little bit more about his work and I came across more work, but I didn't come across more celebration or I didn't come across a lot of uh, museums exhibiting his work. And, and I'm guessing he, he wasn't the most prominent artist. Um, of his movement, you know, come to find out that this was a part of the futurism style, right? You see this painting right here, still has this train going. Let me get our second batch brewing. Okay. Mm. All right. So, right, still, not very much information about him, right? but he still has this train dominant right here in the center, shadowy figures on the sides. Smoke still looks playful and light. It hasn't necessarily taken that, that mold of how we would view it today. And so then I went to Twitter, right, because I wanted to know popular sentiments or, you know, among sectional, a section of people. And so then, you know, look at this. Rest in peace, Italian futurist painter, sculptor, right? Birthday ball spots, so someone mentions him there. And then look at this. 
lot for Antonio Morosco was sold 33% below estimate, right? And it's like, is this just out of style? Is he not in favor, right? You don't still don't see uh, a lot of work around that. Let me pull this up and see if it has anything. All right, our tea is going. Okay. And it could be, you know, people just not vibing with this work, right? But as I said, I have a good taste, right? In general, I have an eye, right? I just know what resonates. I, I, can, I can tell, right? I'm not an artist, but I can do what I can do. And I know good art when I see it, right? That is just my calling. It is my gift. It is a part of me. Sometimes you just have it, right? And I have it. The I, the it factor, right? I can tell. And so when I came across Morosco's work, I said, there's something about this work that is intriguing, right? And so I was just curious why his work isn't necessarily acclaimed, right? And so we go down there. So kind of really short, see? And then you get here. This is the end of his hashtags on Twitter, right? Not very many hashtags. So obviously his work hasn't resonated, you know, cross-sectionally. So, oh, that's, we get to this gallery. So one of the things in his profile that I did notice was the provenance, right? Where it was from. And so we'll get into that just after this pour. So we'll dedicate this pour to your relationships, right? To finding stability within them. Uh, it's the philosopher Montaigne who reminds us of the value of friendship, of finding a sense of community, of finding a sense of family, of finding a sense of home. And so it's so important in life that one, you find community, you find friendships, you find home. You have to build it wherever you are, no matter who you are, no matter what level of life you are at, social status you are at. You have to find community. You have to find family. You have to find friends. You have to find home. So this is to that. Community, family, friend, home. Namaste. Mm. Mm. Nice. Okay. So. Okay. So the um, the Galleria Enu Cicada. That's where we left off, right? Galleria Enu Cicada. Oh, so you guys let me uh, drink that without straining it, without pouring it. You're supposed to have my back. I'm slipping here. I'm slipping. It's all right, though. It's all good. Okay. Okay, so. Let's see. So we get to this gallery. And, you know, not a lot of information about this gallery, but there is this information about the gallery Anna Cicada. And it's in Italian, so we're going to move it to Google Translate, see what the translation is for this. Italian detected. So, it reads, <clears throat> The Anna Cicada Gallery was born in November 1939 under the direction of Bruno Gorsetti. Interesting, 1939, Italy. It's about the time World War II breaks out. It's 
birth is linked to the need for exhibits, uh, need to exhibit works by artists who followed a predominant current in Lombardy or Ch Chiaristas. After a story narrated in detail by Bruno Gorsetti in his book Memories of an Art Dealer, it was from 1969 to 1970 that the gallery, that the direction of the gallery passed to his son Sergio. I know it's like a huge leap. 1939, boom, skips all this and then arrives in 1970, and somewhere in this period. Morosco painted the picture somewhere around this time, somewhere. We don't know exactly when. This came through the gallery and Nusita, right? Where Bruno passed it on to his son Sergio, um, who continued the artistic trend and started by his father, made a further selection of contemporary artists. Then he goes on to name a number of artists. And it goes, for this purpose, the gallery Anusicata, oh, let me see, Anunciata, Anunciata, how about we go with that? The Anunciata Gallery is still present at the most important national international fairs, and it goes on to list where they're at. So, you know, it's a prominent, sounds like it's a prominent gallery there in Lombardy, Milan. But still, even here, didn't mention the artwork by um, Morosco, which is interesting to me. So continue to investigate, right? Okay, so we see the gallery, we see the private collection, but still didn't say who. So we gotta continue our search to try to learn a little bit more about Morosco. Why isn't there any information about Morosco? All this work, but no information. That's intriguing. That's interesting. Um, Echo, next song. It's not that I dislike this song. I just, I just needed a different vibe, right? I just need to, need to slow down and lower beats per minute. <laughs> All right, so Morosco, and then you see the price of the word, 20,000 to 26,000. Hmm. It's interesting. Okay, so then we go look up some more Morosco information. And we go to lot search, right? And it says that analysis of Antonio Morosco, how much does his artwork sell? We saw that thing on Twitter that said that he often sells below. Um, the expectation, but it says the most extensive piece of art by Antonio Morosco in our art price database was sold uh, 26 November 2013 at Auction House Sotheby's for 75,900 euros. Interesting. The price distribution shows that most of the artwork sold are between $500 and $1,000 USD. Hmm, okay. So look at this. 1993, work zero price, right, average. So the blue line is the um, average price. The orange line is auctioned and sold. So this was um, 70,000, right? But they say at what, 2013? What did it say? 2013 was the highest one. So. It's somewhere around here. So this one was the high, right? Highest? Is that right? Yeah. So somewhere around here was the highest sale. And right now, it seems like it's it's back around the same level, right? It seems like it plunged and then rose back up. Uh, so look at the clusters sold by price. Zero to 500, two. Five to a thousand too. So the lot that we're looking at is uh, what twenty thousand. So ten to twenty thousand four. So okay. Sold in cluster. 
interesting words. It's so, so most of the artwork is sold in Italy, right? It's he's kind of this national figure, right? Antonio Morosco, national figure. Okay, so I'm still curious why we can't seem to find more information about Morosco. Like, there has to be something to this because he has a work. It looks interesting. What is it about this guy that we don't see much information about him? And so then I came across this. Right, it's a book, um, the futurism and politics between um, the anarchist rebellion and fascist reaction, and it's by uh, Gunter Burgess. Okay, so came across this book, and so it reads: the brief curriculum vitae indicates that. Morosco's, and this is key here, this phrase, the brief curriculum music, because we haven't been able to find any information about this guy. We, I mean, it's like the internet, it usually has a lot of information on a lot of people, especially for someone who's prolific, right? We saw all of his work. We saw so many different styles of painting of him. We saw him as the, in this futurism movement, but yet we can't quite seem to uh, find information about who Morosco was. Like, this is so strange. Like, why can't we find it? This is boggling my mind. I can't find information about Morosco. But anyway. So it says, this brief curriculum vitae indicates that Morosco's connection with futurism never prevented him from taking new inspiration from other quarters or pursuing an artistic line that was very much his own autonomous creation. Politically, he remained attached to the revolutionary, futurist, fascist, pro what, what, wait, what, wait, what? Wait a minute, Morosco was fascist? Hmm. I think I may need some more tea here. This is about to get a little heavy. Okay. Okay. Pour this water. Okay. Get this water going. Okay. So. No, his work was around the 1930s, and not, I don't know what the guy's political affiliation is. I'm just reading from this book. I'm just asking this question, right? What, well, because we know that inexorably intertwined with art is and can be this deep, deep desire that art, we know that art and political life often intertwine. Artists are often vocal um, participants in, in democracies and in societies, and their artwork often reflects, uh, oftentimes, a liberal view of society. Um, just as corporate interests often reflect a conservative view of society. But, we're, okay, so let's go back to this. Okay, so it says, um, okay, politically, he remained attached to the revolutionary futurist fascist program in 1919. So that was around World War I, which brought him into conflict with the fascist establishment and the futurist leadership in Rome. Hmm. So maybe there was some breakdown. He wanted to do his own thing. I'm not, I'm not quite sure. Let's see. It says, okay, whom he regarded as having sold out artistically and politically to the regime. Interesting. So was he rebelling against fascism? Or did he dissent from it? Or he was a part of it and 
walked away from it. Don't quite know. Don't really know. But it says on January, uh, on 1 January 1933, he launched a foundation manifesto. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Let's get the tea going. We'll continue reading in a second. Okay, so where did I leave off? Okay, so still looking up Morosco and his collection, you know, his connection to there. He says, um, okay, so let's bring this up a little bit. Okay. Mm. Okay, on 1 January 1933, he launched the Foundation Manifesto entitled Gruppi Furitici di Initiative, which in the special issue of Super... Let me see. Let me see this. Oh, sorry. Sorry, I got a folk call. Let me see. Sorry. Uh, let me just... One second, one second, one second. Sorry, had to phone call right there. Get back to that. Um, so it says, uh, in the flyer distributed, okay, so in a flyer distributed at Second Futurist Congress, uh, Morosco summed up his opposition to a brand of futurism that is official, commemorative, um, doctrinaire, out of touch, short-circuited, bankrupt, buried, dead. <laughs> now, if that isn't an indictment on something, <laughs> that is like a takedown. That was like a total kneecap, and he went in. <laughs> It's like, tell me how you really feel. <laughs> He's like, and another thing, let me read that again. It says, Morosco summed up his opposition to a brand of futurism that is official, commemorative, doctrinaire, out of touch, short-circuited, bankrupt, dead, buried. <laughs> <gasps> that's heavy right there i don't know if you get that if someone wanted to take down someone that is how you take down someone that is like a tko right that is like lights out that is done that is through when you say someone listen listen you you are official Right, you are commemorative, right? Commemorative, that's like a keepsake, right? That is like little to no value. That that means like you are a facade, you are a shell, you have no core, you are not rooted. That is, now that's, that's a harsh criticism, right? Remember the next time you're trying to take someone down, listen, right? Because sometimes we think that when we're talking to somebody and we're trying to just express an opinion of doubt about you. Sometimes you think you just got to use this vile language, which you don't, right? That's not necessary. This right here, this is how you take someone out, right? Without them even knowing it, right? Because a lot of pe times people on Twitter and on social media, they use a blowtorch. They use a flamethrower when they try to take somebody out. They used to use a, uh, a sledgehammer, right? And they just start saying all kind of stuff. But this right here is a scalpel, right? And this right here was fine tuning and it was so, so like, ah, that cut deep. Okay, official, bankrupt, right? Wait, official, commemorative, doctrinaire, 
right? It's like doctrinaire. You are so caught up in the appearance and the procedure and just the um, uh, governance that you forget that there is something more there, right? You are only here for the show. Out of touch, short-circuited, bankrupt. And if bankrupt wasn't enough, if it wasn't enough, all that enough, he said, dead, like your work isn't going anywhere. It's not moving anywhere. And then on top of that, not only dead, but buried, like forgotten, right? Isn't that a lot of times, a lot of times, it could be a fear that you may have, like your legacy, what you're working on. Not only is it out of touch, not only is it empty and vapid and void, it can be a little bankrupt. It could be dead, right? It can have no life, right? Your dreams have no life, right? They're, they're buried, right? They're forgotten. Not only are you not working on it, you're not even thinking about it. That can be pretty heavy. Hmm. Okay. So, we continue. Okay. Okay. Let me see. The response in the official journal Furichismo, which was to play down the importance of Morosco's initiative to establish their good relations with him and to print several letters from artists who Morosco had named a Capigrupo in his list of independent groups. Um, their disclaimers of ever having to adhere to the groupie Morosco were printed under the heading um, Ma Caum Futurizo Deto Independiente, um, which was intimate to the whole independent futurist, futurist movement, was pure in, um, invention by Morosco. Hmm. So it, it kind of meanders through his actual involvement. Like, it doesn't outright say if um, Morosco was a fascist or if, uh, I mean, well, it alluded to that, mentioned. And one thing we know is that uh, someone's politics, that can have a lasting influence on how the world views their artwork, right? If he was a fascist, um, that could help shape uh, how the artwork is viewed, right? And so it says, um, let me see. Okay, let me see. It offered a unique opportunity to prove that futurism was, after all, a more suited to become a fascist state art Hmm, than any other competition uh, competitors in the field in an essay with the polit politics of art. Hmm. Interesting. So there are there is some we, we're now seeing the injection of politics into art, especially into the legacy and into the artwork of Morosco, I would conjecture that his association with potentially fascism highly impacts his work and how it's viewed today. And it may contribute to why his legacy is kind of, to use his words, slightly buried. That's interesting. And I guess sometimes you got to consider that, especially if you're an artist, right? Your politics impacts your legacy. All right. And so I wanted to find out a little bit more about the futurism movement in general. And so 
and to turn to my go-to source. You know it, Wikipedia. <laughs> they always, they have the heat. And so listen to this. Okay, so it says um, futurism. Mm. Well, before we get into that, let's get another round going. Let's get the tea brewing. Another round, because we need the energy to pile through this, because that was just heavy, what was dropped on, onto us about Morosco and his work and potentially his legacy and um, the intersectionality of politics and, uh, and art, that, that connection and, and legacy. It's, so let's get the tea brewing. What is this, round four? Round four, this round four? All right, you keep track, can't remember. <laughs> okay, so let's see. Futurism, um, Italian, futurismo, okay. Um, futurism was an artistic and social movement that originated in Italy in the early ninth, I mean, in the early 20th century. It emphasized speed, technology, youth, violence, wow and objects such as car, airplane, and the industrial city. Ah, that makes sense now why the train is at the center, right? If this is a futurism painting, um, uh, he, was, he was painting about futurism, it would make sense that an industrial symbol of modernity um, is the train. And so he goes on to say, okay. So it emphasized speed technology, right? The train did look like it was speeding. It was technology at the, the, the time, you know, it was youth violence and the objects such as a car, an airplane and the industrial city. Well, that, that did look like it was an industrial surrounding. Okay, and it says, its key figures were the Italians. Okay, is Morosco listed here? Let me see. Uh, Marenti, Cara, Saravini, Bala, Musolo. Nope, Morosco's not mentioned in them. It glorified modernity, aimed to liberate Italy from the weight of its past. Cubism contributed to the formation of Italian futurism artistic style. Okay. It says, important futurist works include Marinetti's um, Manifesto of Futurism. Okay, wait one second. Okay, let me see. Okay. Is my tea ready? Let me see if the leaves are ready. You guys ready? No. Needs a little bit longer. A little steep, a little bit longer. This is getting juicy. This is getting good about the politics that for founded this artistic movement that here they were saying the past of the country yeah, is, is, is buried, right? We need to move forward. We need to advance forward. We need to be forward thinking and we need to be forward movement and how they view that things need to be move forward was often using youth, emphasizing technology, speed, violence, and objects such as the car and airplane and the industrial center. It's interesting how parallels seem to form again and again and again throughout history, right? That you're, you can want to move something so far in advance and you're saying, forget your past, forget your history. You get the youth involved and you say, by any means necessary, we try to change this, right? It's so interesting how those parallels arise frequently. Okay, so it says, um, let's get the first pour, right? Okay. Nice. Assume the proper grip. Mm. Okay, so where were we? Where was I at? Ah, you made me lose my place. Okay, here we go. 
right here. It glorified modernity and aimed to liberate Italy from the weight of its past. Important futurist works included, eh, no Morosco listed there. Okay, it says, although it was largely an Italian phenomenon, there were parallel movements in Russia, England, and elsewhere. The futurists practiced in every medium of art, including painting, sculpture, ceramics, graphic design, industrial design, interior design, urban design, theater, film, fashion, textiles, literature, music, architecture, and even cooking. I wonder what futurist cooking looks like. All right, futurismo cooking. <laughs> <laughs> that would be interesting. <laughs> maybe it would be that, uh, what is that molecular gastronomy? Maybe it, maybe that's what it looked like. You know, it de deconstructing what we think the food should look like. Okay, it's a, to some extent, futurism influenced the art movement's art deco. Huh. Constructivism, surrealism, Dada, and to a greater degree, I want to see the, 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 what do you call it? What's the little thing that they usually put at the end? The citation. I want to know the citation that, that futurism influenced that, uh, surrealism. I mean, you can kind of see how they're parallels, but I always want to know how were, how were the actual, what were the actual influence? Okay. And so then he goes on to talk about futurism is an avant-garde movement founded in Milan in 1909. Hmm. Hmm. Let me see. I want to get into that political thing because I want to know the political dynamics with art because I definitely think politics influences art, right? And the legacy of an artist. Okay, let's see. Is it anywhere else? Hmm. Mm. Ah, here we go. There we go. 1920s and 30s. <sighs> I feel like I'm going to need another pour for this. You guys, you let me slip again. I was supposed to pour this in here and filter and strain it. I'm over here getting so drawn into this story that I almost forgot that this is what it was supposed to be be doing? I'm supposed to strain the tea into the teapot, right? Before we pour it into the cup. All right, here we go. Looking good. Bam. All right, got the tea. Okay, so this pour we're going to dedicate to anyone who is still questioning, right, to a decision you have to make. If you have a decision that you have to make and you're not sure of how you're gonna make it and you don't know how to do it, this cup is dedicated to that. Okay. Mm. Ah, this is good. This is good. All right. Um, so, that pour was solid right there. This was excellent right here. Uh, okay, let me see. Oh, let me see. Cheers. Hey, thanks a lot. Yeah, appreciate it. Uh, yeah, just trying to do something different, you know, just vibing here in LA. And cheers to everybody. Namaste to everybody, wherever you are in the world. Stop in for a second, for a moment. Take in the chill vibes. We got the sage burning. We got the Palo Santo wood. We got the tea. We got the chill vibes. Checking in on this art, you know, just living our best life. <laughs> so. All right. So, um, as I said, we're talking about this uh, work by Morosco. We found out Morosco was an Italian painter, 19... 50s, this was painted, somewhere around then. It was a part of the futurism movement. It emphasized industrial technology. It was all about that, right? So this is our, this is what was happening, right? 
And it was a large part of the Italian uh, political movement as well. So this is what we're discovering, right? It got heavy. Because I was wondering why we didn't find a lot of information about this, this artist, Antonio Morosco. Like, there was nothing about him, but he was prolific. We saw all this work. But there was nothing listed about him. You couldn't find any information about him on Twitter, no biographies on him. He wasn't in any museums. He was buried. And so I was just wondering, why was he buried? And now we're trying to see like, if his political affiliations perhaps impacted the legacy of his artwork. And that right there, that is where we're at. And that's why we got to have some more tea. Mm. 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 I'm going to pour this. Let me see. Last cup. Last cup. I think this is the final pour, so this must be round five right here. I can't believe it. We went five rounds. Five rounds and still standing, right? Not knocked out. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, okay. Good, man. Good, man. <laughs> hey, thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Um, smile. Um, does the stream have any uh, prereqs? I'm not quite sure. So I have to be completely honest. I'm pretty new to Twitch and to streaming in general. So I don't know what any of it means. I, I'm a total like dinosaur, like zero clue about any of this. But I figured maybe there was a space that I could come and just chill talk about some art, talk about some books, talk about some literature, have some tea, and just vibe. So, <laughs> I have no clue. <laughs> I had no clue. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> don't really know. <laughs> so thanks, I appreciate it. But little by little, definitely gonna try to learn about what it is I'm supposed to be doing. Because, <laughs> <laughs> seriously? <laughs> It was either this or Hulu or Netflix, right? I was like, you know what? Let me not watch this. Let me go check out some uh, some art and hang. <laughs> oh my gosh. But, all right. So where were we at? Okay. So we got to uh, Morosco. Okay. Artist, Antonio Morosco, Italian. All right. So we made it to, where was it at? Let me see. Saw his artwork. Checked out his Twitter. Saw there wasn't really much happening on his Twitter. He's buried, right? His legacy, not really there. We saw the vow. We saw it was represented by a small gallery. Um, his artwork never really went up in value. It was never really proclaimed. It was never really there. And we read about how his intersection of his political life perhaps impacted his artwork. And now we're starting to see that many Italian futurists, they were part of the fascist movement. And that may be really polarizing, right? That really probably impacted how his work is received today. And um, I just think that it's fascinating that oftentimes you associate artists with like this kind of carefree and avant-garde kind of just feeling of the world. And here, it's a very different view. So I just thought that was interesting. All right. So let me see. Many are Italian futurists supported fascism in the hope of modernizing a country divided between industrializing North and rural, um, archaic South. Wow, that's pretty harsh. Um, futurists um, were Italian nationalist radicals, admirers of violence, who were who opposed to parliamentary democracy. That's that's heavy, right? That's seriously heavy. Um, Marinetti founded the Futurist Political Party. Whew. I think this may be way heavier than I expected, right? I need some. I need to pour this last cup, right? This is the last, this is the last batch. We made it five rounds. 
hope wherever you are, you are chilling too. You are vibing too. Okay. I have to. I have to. Okay. Let me see. Okay. So, I guess as we prepare to kind of land this puppy, this exploration, this tea ceremony, one. You just got to take a deep breath because all we took in, that was heavy. That was a lot. That was that was a movement, right? Um, second, we got to just know that, uh, yeah, your legacy is impacted by who you are, right? That's always how the that's how that's how you'll be seen, right? Your reputation, it, it carries with you. It, it's long lasting, right? It's trail. It it goes deep. It goes long. So remember that your reputation is key. Got to keep it golden. Got to keep it solid. So this cup right here, this cup is going to be for your reputation, right? Wherever you are, wherever you are, keep that solid. Namaste. So we got one more left. This is one more cup. This is one more pour, right? Five rounds, still standing. We made it. We went through the legacy of Morasco, what little we could find. We went through his curriculum VT. We went through the bios that we could find. We went through the books. We browsed through Wikipedia. We scoured the internet. We searched his hashtags. And this is what we found. This is what we've uncovered. It's epic, right? That your reputation lasting. It carries on. Like that is the lesson here. <laughs> that even if you got this artwork that is very prolific, your legacy is impacted by who you are. Whew! That is, that's a message right there for somebody. That right there, it's a wake up call. <laughs> okay, so now that we found out that you know more about Morasco and his work, and we see that its work is often undervalued. All right, last pour, last pour. This is it. This is we we made it. We ma we made it to the end. This right here. Our Saturday night is about to be through, right? This time together, this tea ceremony right here. All right, let me see, let me see, let me see. Okay, so this painting, this painting, what do we say? Um, Passageo con treno, uh, um, train in the landscape, train with landscape. We made it through, painted in the early 1950s. We made it through. The provenance, we did it. We scoured. We, we, we did all we could, right? And we find ourselves here, right here, back where we started. Isn't that like life? You arrive back where you start sometimes, over and over again. But we bring with us this greater awareness about Morasco's life, his legacy, what little we could find. But we still have the art. And... Um, so cheers to you and to what remains. All right, everybody. That was the last cup. Listen, I'm going to do a soul dance just for all of you guys. And I invite you to do your soul dance. And we're going to call it a wrap. Like, we did it. We made it. We came. We saw. We conquered.
All, all right, everybody, it's been real. Namaste, many deep bows of gratitude to you all for joining me for this tea ceremony, this tea sesh, exploring the life of Antonio Morasco. Wherever you are in the world today, I hope that you find a space of peace and balance and blessing within your life because sometimes we get so caught up in what we don't have and who we aren't that we forget that we got to find some balance with what remains, right, of who we are. And it's so important to just take some time to take inventory of your life, affirm yourself and find that strength within. Otherwise, you remain unbalanced. Otherwise, you don't, you aren't able to proceed in a skillful way. So until next time, thank you for joining me for this tea ceremony. Many deep bows of gratitude to you all. Namaste.